Hello and welcome to the energy storage course and with this video series we would like to deal with chemical energy storage and chemical energy storage systems. Chemical energy is more or less what our nowadays energy system completely is based on, on the fossil energy carriers like natural gas, like coal and oil products. So why we are dealing in a renewable energy course with these topics? The reason is we are today only used to discharge these technologies, meaning just to consume oil and gas products. But we also can use renewable energy supply systems in order to generate those chemical energy carriers and then having a new energy storage systems. And as it, is, as it is a quite complex topic, in this series we only talk about the charging technologies, meaning how can we generate those fuels out of renewable electricity. Again, you can find this topic much better explained in the book Energiespeicher, Bedarf, Technologien und Integration that I have been writing together with my colleague Michael Sterner from OTH Regensburg, who is also the expert here in this chemical energy carrier section. Unfortunately, at the moment it is only available in German language, but you already have translated this book into English and hopefully soon it will be available in the market. What is the agenda when we talk about this charging technologies for chemical energy carriers? So we start with some basics, then we will talk about charging technologies uh, producing hydrogen, conventional hydrogen production, climate neutral hydrogen production, the water electrolysis, and then later we go a step further and talk about the methanation and chemical synthesis uh, of chemical energy carriers. Why do we talk about chemical energy storage? It has certain advantages. The first one, it's a low, less, low loss storage. Um, when it is once created, those chemical energy carriers almost no, don't have losses. Oh yes, they have losses when they are generated, they are quite high. But when they are produced, they almost don't have losses and so far they are an excellent option also for long-term storage. Maybe the only option beside from long-term seasonal heat storage that we nowadays know how to make a seasonal energy storage. They have very low storage efficiency rates compared to electrical or electrochemical storages, but they offer the link between the different energy sectors, power, heat and mobility. So all those terms, power to heat, power to gas, power to liquid, power to chemicals, everything becomes possible by going this chemical energy storage path. And we can use already existing infrastructure of the conventional energy system as we can supply with that the chemical industry, the gas network, we can use petrol stations and we can use the completely normal and conventional combustion system but then using the renewably generated fuels. So going for the basics, when we look uh, to our world we have hundreds of chemical elements available but in the energy system it's almost only three we are really using and that is the carbon, it's the hydrogen and it is the oxygen. And within this triangle, all our nowadays energy system more or less is working with. So starting with what we get when we are combusting the fossil energy sources, then we get all the products that we find here on this line reaching from water H2O to CO2, the carbon dioxide and all the products in between. It's what we get when we combust, when we burn uh, fuels like gas, like oil, like oil, coal products. When we go for bioenergy, for bioenergy we get all those elements that are on that dotted line going down from water down to carbon. All those green marked 
uh, elements, they are the bioenergy products. And when we go further down towards the carbon, then we have our coal products. And then on that line on the completely left side, the connection between hydrogen and carbon, there we have all those hydrocarbons like the coal, like the natural gas, the methane, like diesel, like boxes, all those elements. And how was it created? That was a charging process. And that was a charging process mainly made by photosynthesis by the help of sun. First it has been produced the bioenergy and then nature processed that further and all those elements by oiling the oils had been produced, natural gas had been produced and coal products had been produced via the coalification. And what we are doing since almost 100-200 years, all that storage that has been charged over millions of years that we are in a few years, in a few decades, in a few hundred years by combustion of these products, all those red arrows uh, we see here on the graph show the combustion process, uh, extremes big discharge of a very big energy storage. But the same what nature has done over centuries, over thousands, millions of years, nowadays we know how we also can do that on a technical basis. Maybe the most famous one is what we see on the complete other upper side. That is when we have the water electrolysis and then we produce the hydrogen. Then we have a high energy density energy carrier that we again can use to produce, for example, electricity or heat or use in the mobility sector. And by other technologies, but also the same way of thinking, we can use solar energy, we can use wind energy and biofuels to come from electricity and biofuels and generate chemical fuels, either hydrogen, either methane or liquid hydrocarbons again and then we have the same what nature is producing over many many years we can do in a short time and then of course we have a closed cycle when we once have produced those chemical energy carriers we can discharge them in the same way like we are doing that nowadays with the fossil energy carriers. And that was the short introduction. In the next video, we will then show the generation of hydrogen. Thank you very much.